Well, Arsenal have knocked Chelsea out of the Moise Quesido race and this is the best story that you'll ever want to hear if at all you are an Arsenal fan this evening. And obviously, it's really something concrete that cannot be changed. It's based on vivid reasons that the former Arsenal correspondent for the Football London has gone ahead and really obviously revealed it and that is Chris Whitley. Welcome to this channel. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel. And how do you subscribe? Lower right bottom corner. There is a black button that has the word subscribe. After smashing it, hit the notification bell. That will enable you to get notified every time we upload a video onto this channel. Now it's really a very good day that the Lord has made lots of rain today it has rained cats and dogs in my country and in my area of residency but we thank god that we are still alive not so so let's get into these other stories Florent balogan talks are really continuing between his representatives and us know we are going to get to know what sky sports are going to has going to hate let us know about foreign balogan and lastly we are talking Charlie Patino, Fabrizio Romano, dropping a huge hint about his future at Arsenal. Most people really like Charlie Patino, especially my comrade known as Kosi Arsenal Podcast loves Charlie Patino a lot. And there is a very huge update that he really won't like about Charlie Patino and Arsenal. After scoring that goal uh, against Sunderland, and he really showed us that he has a swift left foot and can play into that midfield, looks like Arsenal are moving on to the next would be left player in the world now how many likes let let's make it 300 this time round not so it's moise quesido and i know how you guys like moise quesido and it's a kick in the teeth of chelsea and who has gonna have to apply it to the teeth of chelsea that is arsenal and it's chris whitley a former arsenal correspondent for football london and right now his work is is writing for what we call the London World and the Net World Pub. That is what he writes for. And he has told us that Keisido doesn't have a fixed preference on which club he wants to join this summer. Sources close to the club have told London World, but he wants to play UEFA Champions League football. Kesido valued at around £75 million is being targeted by both Arsenal and Chelsea, but no formal bid or no formal offer has been made by any of those teams. Now, in fact, in life, there are what we call fixed, fixed situations that can only change after a long period of time. Now, when you hear that Kesido wants to really play Champions League football, you just get Chelsea out. That means that's a technical knockout. Because he has no fixed preference on where he wants to go. He wants to play Champions League football. You know? Arsenal. Chelsea. Who is playing in the Champions League? It's Arsenal. Chelsea is nowhere to be seen into this mix. And that's why they're out of the race. And this is what we call a technical knockout. And uh, I think Chelsea might have might have thought of trying elsewhere because there is something that Moise Kesido is wanting that Chelsea doesn't have. That's it. You know? Moise Kesido <coughs> is even playing the UEFA Europa League at Brighton and Chelsea aren't playing not even into the Conference League. So, what is the aim of him going there? So, his preference is to play in the Champions League. Chelsea can't offer Champions League football. That's it. So that is what we call a hammer blow that cannot be refixed. Because how can you refix something like that? Moise Caicedo, very much rated. Chelsea, we are going in for him after losing Manuel Ugarte to PSG. But looks like when they try to contact the representatives of Caicedo, they told them, we want Champions League football and you cannot offer it to us. So looks like the only side left to compete with Arsenal on Moise Quesido is Man United. But I brought you a story yesterday about Jacob's pen, letting you know of how United's interest in Moise Quesido is not all that significant. All what United have gone ahead to do is to tell Brighton to keep them in abreast on the upcomings of the Moise Quesido situation, meaning that they just want to keep themselves in the know of the Moise Quesido developments at Brighton because right now as we speak 
United can't come out and obviously make a bid to sign Kesido because Ten Hag doesn't know his real budget. United, they don't know who their owner is going to be. And the hundred million pounds that is available, Ten Hag wants to see it that his first signs what we call either Mason Mount or a world class center forward. That's Eric Ten Hag for you, and that's what he wants to do at Man United. So it leaves Arsenal singly in this race. And uh, <clears throat> I really understand that Fabrizio Romano told us yesterday the delay in this Moise Kessido deal, but today I've gotten to know another scenario as to why Arsenal are taking their time or they are taking forever to really make even a move for Moise Kessido because they know they are the only team that are really in this race that is really competitive. Unless otherwise, United gets bought by the end of this week and the new owner is announced, cash is splashed and then Mois Kesido will find himself in the move to go on and really get competition or <coughs> sorry Arsenal will find themselves in a position of moving early or fast for Mois Kesido if at all United shows interest but even if United's ownership is declared this week it will take United close to three weeks to really start splashing money to know how much they're going to spend in this transfer window because it's not going to be something that happens <coughs> in a nick of time. Remember Chelsea, their takeover was accomplished at the end of March. They made their first signing in July. So United can only make the casino move possible if at all they say we are turning out for Mason Mount and you're going in for Moise Casido. That's how it can happen. But they are so much sold onto an idea of bringing in what we call homegrown talent at the club of Man United as very many homegrown players are expected to leave Man United like Harry Maguire, Scott McTominay, Brandon Williams, Anthony Elanga. So they are letting out four so they need to bring in more to see to it that they really level the ground onto that 17 17 number of players of homegrown players required in their squad so that gives Arsenal a very big wars of space and uh, <clears throat> I think Arsenal just want to get the deal of Declan Rice out of the way and after that is done they'll find themselves in a situation of really attacking the situation of Moise Kessido. I really understand before Mikel Arteta attempts to bring in any other player they are going to first get in Two midfielders that is Moise Kesido and Declan Rice and if at all that is done it's really going to be so much important to the fans of Arsenal as most of you here really want Moise Kesido to come to Arsenal so it's a kick in the teeth it's a hammer blow to Chelsea however much they're interested in Moise Kesido they have the money they can pay him more than Arsenal they can even make a bid to outbid Arsenal at Brighton but the player's interest is not lying to a team that is not in the Champions League football. Even if you're playing UEFA Europa League, Moise Kessido doesn't want because a team that is departing is playing UEFA Europa League. So how can you convince him to come in through and obviously play into what we call that UEFA Europa, UEFA Europa League side, yet he wants the Champions League tournament? And Arsenal is the only team that can provide the Champions League the Champions League slot for Moise Kesido and he exactly knows that <clears throat> he has a starting spot in that Arsenal side. As I've already told you in the previous video about Thomas Partey <clears throat> and Saturnity at Arsenal and his future and the challenges he has to meet to see to it that he really gets back into that team. It surpass Moise Kesido and Declan Rice in that midfield because they are the ideal players that Mikel Ateta wants at Arsenal. <laughs> he knows why they drew at Liverpool, why they lost at Man City and other games because they lacked intensity in that midfield. But if at all he goes at Etihad with Keisido, uh Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard in that midfield, he knows he can do a job onto that City side. So that's it coming in from Chris Whitley and obviously Chelsea have been given what we call a technical knockout as far as the story of them trying to pursue the Ecuadorian international is concerned that is Moise Quesido. We go to Florin Balogan, Sky Sports, dropping a very huge update about him. They've told us that talks between Arsenal and Balogan's representatives continue over the striker's future. There is strong interest from the English Premier League clubs and Europe in Balogan. He has two years left on his contract. The 21-year-old scored 21 goals in 
21 goals on loan at Remis last season and once regular football. That is Flaron Balogan. Now, I think it's really going to be a very heated conversation between Arsenal and Flaron Balogan, Flaron Balogan, because it aren't easy to come at Arsenal and really dislodge Gabriel Jesus. And in the mind of Balogan, he believes that he should be a starting centre forward at Arsenal. But the tide has changed at Arsenal. Even Eddie Hinketia, when I was reading a certain reports, it indicated that Mikel Ateta is a big fan of this lad. And who, in particular, Eddie Nketiah. Meaning that if Balogan is to stay at Arsenal, he's going to be what we call a third choice striker. And his representatives believe he can't be that. After snapping the English national team and joining the US national team, it's something that is factual on his real thoughts on what he thinks is. Having that ego he has is good, but can he return that ego into goals? Obviously, he has gonna hate to turn it into goals in the League One. But everyone will tell you frankly that you can't put League One to the Premier League. But on any day, I'm going to say this, and some Arsenal fans are really going to be left in divided opinions. I would start Balogan over Hedinketia. But Jesus remains the first choice centre forward and Balogan comes second. But Balogan has a chance to show that he is really a grown up man and a better striker in the preseason that Arsenal is going to be playing in America and Germany and at the Emirates. How? Coming through the preseason, they are playing Man United, Borussia Dortmund, is it Barcelona? Go into those games, score goals. And leave it to Mikel Arteta to judge. One thing I've known about Mikel Arteta is he's not a manager who picks players on favoritism. He picks players on merit. The best players step on the field of play. <laughs> That's it. Though towards the final bend of the season, he looked like was favoring so much Thomas Partey over Jorginho, and he just realized it later, though it was late, that Jorginho would have gone ahead to get the job done in that team of Arsenal. So, as it stands, it looks like Florian Balogan will be pushing to leave Arsenal if at all Ateta doesn't promise him enough playing time. Obviously, if a player was going ahead to score 21 goals in the French League 1, I think he has every mantle to demand to prove himself in the Premier League. So, we wait and see whether Balogan will really prove himself that side. Of Arsenal. And lastly, Charlie Patino joining other departures at Arsenal. Fabrizio Romano dropping a very huge hint about the current situation of Charlie Patino. And it reads There was the recent re revelation that he wanted to leave, although it's gone quiet. My understanding is that the situation remains the same. He wants a new challenge and a permanent exit from and the permanent exit. From Arsenal's perspective, they would ideally like a buyback clause included into the deal where Charlie Patino is going to go. So, Mikel Ateta, Edu, value him highly. For a team to put or to include a buyback clause into your contract, you need to show that quality in you. And Charlie Patino is really a quality player. At Blackpool, he showed his qualities there and I think he needs to move to another more competitive championship side to prove himself. But he's a very, very talented player that Kosi Arsenal podcast likes a lot and uh, he believed a lot in him. But uh, the levels at Arsenal have gone ahead to raise, you know, unexpectedly and they're now vying for titles. So what Mikel Ateta is looking at is simple. He wants quality players that can take him through the Champions League title and obviously the Premier League title like Keishido and Declan Rice with the jam or the overload in that central midfield of Arsenal trust me Charlie Patino has no chance to go past or to future in any of the tournaments so when you look at the midfield of Arsenal they are having 
Jorginho, Thomas Pate, if they bring in Moise Kesido, they bring in Declan Rice, you know, there is Albert Sambilo Konga, there is El Nini, there is Fabio Vieira, there is Martin Odegaard, there is Emery Smith Rowe. It's really compact. So, it being compact, all its compactness has shown lots of huge levels as far as this team is really concerned and way to see where Charlie Patino is going to go. But it's going to contribute some good money <coughs> for Arsenal. Especially for Charlie Patino, they can get 15 million pounds. Um, then, which other guy? Florian Balogan, close to 40 or 50 million pounds are really valued in that striker because if um, David, Jonathan David, who has been scoring 20 goals a season in League One, is valued at 60 million pounds, why not value this one at 20? At why not this one? Why not value this one who is just 21 years of age at 40 50 million pounds if at all you are Arsenal? So, guys, your thoughts on Arsenal knocking Chelsea out of the Moise Kessido race? <laughs> Welcome in the comment section below. What do you make about Balogan? Keep or sell Patino Chadi with a hint coming in from Fabrizio Romano. A sign out for now. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living true God protect you abundantly. Me out.